In this video we're going to draw a scatter plot and line graph. We're going to estimate using the line graph and then we're going to talk about why scatter plots are useful in the world at all. Okay. So we'll draw a scatter plot with this data. Uh, here is temperature in degrees Celsius. Here's the speed of ants at this temperature. Uh, you don't have to take it down. You could just go ahead and make sure you have graph paper. So you need graph paper for this video. I will go ahead and plot that data. Okay, so um, a scatter plot is just like a bar graph. In fact, it's it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, but instead of drawing a bar, you just draw a point. So when we look at this data now, you would it would be kind of um, it would be intuitive and it would make common sense to say that the speed of an ant depends on the temperature you know at, a, at the hotter the day you know the faster the ant you can see the speed going up as it gets hotter right so you'd say speed depends on temperature therefore the temperature is going to be at the bottom and the speed is going to be the uh, 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 on the uh, vertical axis so the temperature will be the um, input and the speed will be the output so to speak or the temperature will be the independent variable and the speed will be the dependent variable anyway I hope you, it might make just common sense to you that the um, speed should go uh, uh, temperature should go on the bottom and, and, and speed should go on the, uh, on the horizontal axis and speed should go on the vertical axis anyway our temperature ranges from 25.6 to 33 would it be smart to do a graph that starts at zero and goes up to say 33? Because look, your other numbers like 25.6, that's about here. So you'll have a whole bunch of graph of axes not even being used. I mean you could do this if you wanted to, but it might be a little bit smarter to start our graph at about 20 or 25 or something like that. So let's start it at say 20 degrees Celsius instead of zero. And we'll have it going up to about 35. So I guess we could just go up in ones, right? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, right? and then the speed of the ant goes from 2.62 to 4.17 we could start that at 0 and just go up to 4, have 4 up here, that would be pretty good wouldn't it? so start at 0 and let's see every 5 could be a centimeter per second so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so 1 one, two, three, four, five, and that could be two. One, two, three, four, five, and that could be three. One, two, three, four, five, and this could be four, right? So we've marked off our axes. Of course, we need to draw a line through each one. Like that. This is. Um, and, and anyway, at this point, we'll just see if this is going to work out for us or not. And I'm just going to use a red pen for the for the dots. So, at 25.6 degrees, the ants can run at about 2.62 centimeters per second. Centimeters per second. So, 25.6. Hmm. This is 25. This is 30. And this is look. If you look at this, this is 26. Is right here. 26 is right here. See that? So we want 25.6 is in between 25 and 26, and 2.62. Where is that? Well, 2.62. This would be if we marked it off in fives. This would be 2.2, and then we'd have 2.4, and then we'd have 2.6, and then we'd have 2.8, right? And then we'd have three. So this, these, each horizontal line represents an increase of 0.2 so 25.6 and 2.62 would be about there 
and then the next one 27.5 and 3.03 .03. here's 27 27.5 would be about here so this is 27 is about there 27.5 is in between 27.28 and then we have 3.03 .03 is practically at 3 so we put a dot there and now press pause and see if you can do the next two dots press pause and do the next two dots okay I hope you press pause and tried it I'm gonna do it now 30.4 and 3.56 30.4 is just a little over 30 3.56 well let's see this is 3.2 this is 3.4 would be about there 3.6 3.8 so that's 3.4 and this one is 3.6 so where is 3.56 it's just underneath 3.6 and 30.4 is just above thir to the right of 30 so 3.56 would be about there and then we have 33 and 4.17 so 33 31 32 33 is here and 4.17 is 4 almost 4.2 4.2 of course is here 4.2 so it's just underneath that line. So 33 is right on this line, and 4.17 is just below. So that's a scatter plot. You've done it. This is a scatter plot. It's just plotting points. Whereas in the previous section, we plotted bar graphs. We draw bars. So instead of drawing bars, we're just plotting points. That's the only difference. Okay. Now to can to turn a scatter plot into a line graph all we have to do is join up the dots that's it so you just get a ruler and you join two dots together and then you join another two dots together and then you join another two dots together now you have a line graph so when we just had the dots on their own it was a scatter plot now that we have the dots joined up, it's a line graph. Okay? And that's how to draw them. Now, um, we're going to use this line graph. To, uh, well, first of all, I'll give you the reason for having line graphs. If you have a line graph, you can use just this. We just had data for four calculations. So the, the ants were running along. And the, this and and a scientist just um, calculated their speed at different times in the day. So this is earlier in the day; it wasn't so hot. And then the temperature increased. This is about midday at 33 degrees Celsius. It's about midday, and the speed increased to here. And the scientist just took four readings. But just from those four readings, we can use that to make all sorts of um, estimates, right? So we could estimate, for example, the running speed of ants at 29 degrees. And of course, you would say, well, it's got to be 29. That's in between 27.5 and 30.4. It's got to be in between 3.03 and 3.56, right? And yes, it is. And if you just look at the line graph, you can make a really quick estimate. So we're going to estimate running speed of ants at 29 degrees, OK? So what we do is we go to the line at the bottom where we have temperature. Uh, in fact, we should have labeled that. So this is temperature, and this one is speed. And we just find um, 29 on this graph. 29 is about here. This is 29 and then we just go straight up from 29 All right? and because we joined the two dots together this line part helps us get an estimate for what the speed would be at 29 degrees Celsius and if I go straight back I'm in between 3.4 and 3.2 So what's in between 3.4 and 3.2? 
in between 3.4 and 3.2 you would probably say 3.3 right so 29 degrees Celsius we have an estimate of 3.3 centimeters per second okay can you do a quick estimate for the running speed of ants at 26 degrees Celsius press pause and do this estimate estimate the running speed of, of ants when it's 26 degrees Celsius outside use your graph okay so do 26 degrees Celsius okay hope you've pressed pause and tried it I'm gonna try it now here's 26 degrees Tw oh 26 okay I'm just gonna go up until I hit the line and then I'm just gonna go straight back and I land at 2.8 so at 26 degrees Celsius we have an estimate of 2.8 centimeters per second is the speed of the ant right can we estimate running speed of ants at 35 degrees Celsius we we can we have to kind of guess this is just like um, this is this is going to be just like extrapolation because 35 degrees Celsius you see is outside of the data we have 35 is here so if we go straight up from 35. In fact, if I go straight up from 35, I'm not going to hit any part of a line. Okay. So how am I going to estimate for 35 degrees? Any idea? Well, how about continue this line on and see what happens, right? that's one way so you could just continue the line and then we'll go up and we'll hit the line and then we'll go straight back and we're a little off with our graph but we'll still get an estimate we'll still get an estimate so 4.2 4.4 4 and about 4.6 or maybe even 4.7 just a quick estimate right so it looks like you could get to about uh, 35 degrees Celsius the answer be gone about 4.7 centimeters per second based on the graph right um, now we could have calculated this because this is outside the data we could have calculated that using extrapolation and I'll just show you really quickly but we could have done that um, the same way we learned in the previous chapter so we could have gone basically four point we, we would take the uh, four point one seven and subtract three point five six and divide that by the change in temperature thirty three point zero minus thirty point four so four four point one seven minus 3.56 and then we got 33 minus 30.4 so 0 0.61 over 2.6 and that gives us um, 0 0.235 about and then we were going to go to 35 so we're at um, so at 33 degrees we're at 4.17 is the speed so we take 4.17 at the 33 degrees mark right and we add on so we want to go to 35 degrees so we want to go two degrees more so two times 0 0.235 so 4.17 plus 2 times 0 0.235 gives us 4.64 okay which is close to 4.7 which is what we got from the graph right so this was extrapolation which we covered in the previous chapter or section and we could also 
figured out these estimates using interpolation. Okay, where we get 29 degrees Celsius, we estimated that and that. That so this this could have been done with interpolation if we wanted to, right? But of course, it's a lot quicker using the graph really for those uh, estimates, isn't it? Okay, now you might be wondering why are scatter plots useful and why do we use them? Well, if you just go to page 92 of your textbook and have a look at that plot for Old Faithful, the geyser in Yellowstone, there's so many data points. If you look at those little green dots, that would take a long time to graph that, wouldn't it? Let's not do that, that'll take too long. But there's so many data points there, you know, and if you were to make a bar graph with all that, it would be a little bit of a mess. You just have bars everywhere. So a scatter plot um, is good if you've got lots and lots of data and you just want to see a certain pattern. And for this graph, what pattern do you see? What can, what can we tell about Old Faithful from this graph? By all means, press pause, think about it, and then play the video and see if you've see if you figured it out. What what pattern do we see here? What does the graph tell us? Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried to think about that. What the graph is saying, one well, there's a lot of things it's saying, but what one thing I I think we we could all agree on is that um, if you wait about 50 minutes or 60 minutes the duration of the eruption is probably going to be around two or two and a half minutes or one and a half minutes okay so if you wait around 50 or 60 minutes your, your eruption time is only going to be about two minutes if you have the patience and and you find that oh we've waited about 80 minutes an hour and 20 minutes 80 minutes for the geyser to erupt again because it erupts every hour or so right um, but if we wait around 80 minutes for it to erupt then you'll find that your eruption time will be about four or four and a half minutes so in other words it's worth waiting for the longer you wait for it the more likely you'll have a big long eruption or long eruption does that make sense well, it does. I mean, because I mean, the um, it, it's a it's a bunch of uh, steam building up, uh, steam and heat building up underneath the the earth, right? So obviously, if it if it's building up for longer, it's going to be a longer eruption and a bigger eruption, right?